नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यू आर वाचिंग आर शो पर्सपेक्टिव वेर वी ब्रिंग यू डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस ऑफ की नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इश्यूज टुडे वी गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिमोट वोटिंग इंडिया इज द वर्ल्ड्स लार्जेस्ट डेमोक्रेसी एंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया प्रोवाइड्स यूनिवर्सल एडल्ट सफरेज टू इट्स सिटीजन्स irrespective of race religion gender and economic status there has been a significant increase in voter registration over the past uh, few years however the stagnation of uh, voter participation is a cause of concern as per the available data approximately 1/3 of the voters do not vote this translates to a high figure of uh, about 30 crore eligible voters not participating in the election process according to election commission of india the inability to vote due to internal migration is one of the prominent reasons behind low voter turnout the election commission on monday showcased the remote electronic voting machine prototype for migrant voters to representatives of political parties this multi constituency remote electric electronic voting machine rvm would enable migrant voters to vote from remote polling stations as well eci has also solicited written views of recognized political parties by 31st of january on various related issues including uh, changes required in legislation administrative procedures uh, and uh, voting method rvm or technology for domestic migrants meanwhile 15 opposition parties have said that they will oppose the election commission's multi constituency remote electronic voting machine for domestic migrants uh, terming the pro- proposal as uh, very sketchy with uh, huge political anomalies and problems uh, such as no clarity on definition and number of domestic migrants so today we'll try and understand uh, this overall issue of uh, remote voting the concept of remote voting and why it is required and how can we bring uh, you know those uh, migrant voters uh, to the polling station as well and for more on this we joined by a distinguished panel of experts let me first uh, introduce them to you beginning with mr akshay raut is joining us who is uh, former director general election commission of india we also have with us dr ak verma political analyst and uh, shekhar rayar a senior journalist is also joining us welcome all of you gentlemen uh, to the show i'll begin with you mr raut and let me first start by uh, asking you and trying to understand how serious is this problem in terms of you know uh, a significant number of voters not turning up for vote because the voter turnout uh, if you look at the data is uh, stagnant somewhere around 67 68% in most of the uh, elections uh, be it assembly elections or lok sabha elections as well over the past few years uh vishal ji you have just mentioned the problem in nutshell in your initial words you said that the universal adult franchise was given to the indian citizens by the constitutional fathers there was an intention that there will be a representation in governance of the citizens themselves all the qualified citizens you also mentioned in the same go that a third of the electors don't vote so there is a problem and this problem is attempted to be addressed among other things with the remote voting facility uh but let me take you just one or two steps back you know the the whole issue of election is voter centric and fortunately the elections are the management looks at it from a more voters perspective of late because if the voter is facilitated then only to that extent elections and democracy get stronger and one of the major reasons is that mm-hmm. the ordinary resident gets registered but when because of exist- existential reasons he or she moves out whether for education or for marriage or for jobs then suddenly he or she finds himself or herself stranded stranded between the place where he has his emotional family social connection and the other place where he is just stationed temporarily okay so the election commission has this noble intention in fact this is nothing new i must mention this work has been going on for long i am a little surprised with the development visal ji because from the time i have been to some extent associated with the election process all around if you go civil society citizens the youth the people who stay in hostel there is one question we are a technology power we are an it power with so much why we are not able to vote from a remote location okay why we lose our franchise because i can't travel back to home we have been facing glaring and big big questions so at least for the first time there has been an honest 
diligent and systematic effort to bring something to be piloted. Okay. And I am a little surprised, and, and perhaps my understanding of the case is not the same as yours. There is not complete opposition. In fact, the political parties have mentioned, partly it was anticipated, that let there be an agreement whether we should have the remote voting machine at all. Uh -huh. Then we'll go to what are the details of technology. So there is a preparedness to talk. There is a preparedness to understand. But perhaps they have expressed their initial reservations on the matter. And in any case, Election Commission already mentioned in its initial concept note that there are administrative, legal and operational issues to be sorted out. Technology is just one part and it is quite possible which they wanted to demonstrate. Uh -huh. But they have mentioned that the other things are more important and they have to sort it out. Okay. So I am finding it, I am finding it as a good start of a dialogue for a good cause to make elections inclusive and to make it possible for those who are domestic migrants under the compulsions of life. Indeed, indeed. Those who are missing out on the opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, to their uh, most important fundamental right, that is uh, to exercise their franchise, that should be taken care of. Uh, the intentions are pretty much clear and uh, uh, noble as well. But there are various aspects, as you mentioned, uh, Mr. Rauth. And let me bring in uh, both, uh, you know, Mr. Iyer and uh, Dr. Verma as well on those issues. Dr. Verma, one of the major issues uh, which needs to be settled is is who is a who is a domestic migrant? How do you classify that? That's one. And, and what's the number? Well, Vishal, I mean, this is a question which the Election Commission is seized with. And it is already in consultation with several stakeholders on how to define the, the migrant workers and how to get to the numbers. So it's, there is no ready-made answer how to define migrant labor because migration itself is, you know, uh, a very, very, uh, uh, you know, hazy word and uh, you cannot say who is the migrant or who is not a migrant because, you see, the migration can be just from the constituency, the migration can be from the district, the migration can be from the state and even the migration can be international. Mm -hmm. So you have to first of all understand which kind of a migration do you want to address. That is point number one. The second is that as we have already showed that in the 2021 census, around 46 yeah, or 37 crore, uh, you know, uh, migra migrants, uh, 46 crore migrants have been shown, which means around 37% of the entire population. That is a census data. So it's a huge, huge number. And, you know, there can be so many reasons, but the question is not very difficult to define because migration is, you can make a process of registration. Those, those who want to leave their constituency, those who want to leave their district, those who want to leave their state, their state, there can be some portal for online registration that I am registered in this constituency and I am moving to that because it can be family matter, it can be maybe a, a, a job thing or in search of some work, people need to go out. And once they go out, they are, they, are, they, are, they are busy in, you know, settling them down in that particular new locale. And they're not so much bothered about getting registered or getting their EPIC uh, made again. Okay. So these are issues which are not as difficult as we think that it is very difficult. It's a very simple thing. You have a technology to support and uh, the definition can be addressed, uh, you know, in consultation with several sociologists or other people who are expert in defining what a migration is. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that this issue can be addressed. But the question is that the, 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 the volume of migration and the number of migrants is so much that we certainly need to address uh, how they uh, are to be roped in to make the democratic process more inclusive. Okay, okay, indeed, that is a very significant number there. Uh, uh, approximately 30 crore, which we were talking about. Uh, Mr. Ayer, I'd like to bring you in here. You covered, uh, uh, you know, uh, a number of elections uh, at, at state level, at national level as well. Now, this number which we're talking about, uh, roughly 30 crore or one, uh, you know, uh, one out of every uh, three or four voters, uh, is it all domestic migrant? Because, you know, uh, we've seen, uh, despite the best efforts of uh, Election Commission of India, you know, voter apathy, specifically in, in, in urban areas, you know, there are a significant number of voters who don't turn up to vote. So it's not 
entirely, uh, you know, this number doesn't entirely consist of domestic migrants. There is a significant section of population which will uh, have to be sensitized more, uh, you know, more made aware of their right that they should come out and cast their vote. That part is also needs a bit more push. Do you agree? No, definitely. You see, the Election Commission has been looking at this aspect. So, uh, they have been always looking at what is called the urban apathy. Particularly, we have seen that in voting in urban areas has been quite disappointing compared to even rural areas. So, that Election Commission has been talking of voter education, voter awareness campaign, and involving different sections of the society, NGOs. You know, that is a different thing. But this particular thing is about use of a new technology which has been indigenously developed. They have, been, they have used a very trusted DVM machine and which is not networked because often this fear, you know, earlier there, you see, what is happening is whenever a new thing is brought, you know, any new uh, idea comes, there is bound to be what is called the law of atrophy. You know, there is a resistance. Questions are asked whether it is safe, whether it is hack proof. So we have had problems with EVM even yesterday. I mean, even that last meeting, we heard, we saw opposition parties saying, look, we, when we are not sure about EVM, you are bringing something else new. See, this fear is there. See, political parties, definitely you need the consensus of the political parties. But political parties always tend to look at, you know, how does this change the game? Because their fear is always whether a new thing, whether a new technology will affect them. See, I mean, definitely from ballot box to EVM has affected a number of parties which believed in different methods of ensuring voters, uh, rather the votes are cast. So let us not go into that. We have come far away from those days when, you know, booth capturing, elections being suspended, you know, people running away with ballot boxes. From that to this day, which is where it is temper-proof, VVM has been shown to be one of the most innovative things that has happened to a democracy. And today we are able to tell the world, you know, a lot of countries have evinced interest. Election Commission has been, you know, uh, you know, sharing this knowledge with countries which are interested in this. Mm -hmm. It's a big thing that's happening. But it's a time also for political parties, you know, this is an opportunity for them to, you know, to examine it not purely from their political view, you know, in terms of what is the percentage of migrant votes vote for us. See, even yesterday, that one concept, I mean, one idea that came when these opposition leaders were talking, see, more than 87% of this migration within states. So their idea is why not try it out in the states? I mean, why don't you try it out there, then you talk of a national level. See, definitely that is going to happen in 2024, you know, for the 2024 elections. Okay. If at all, if anything has to be done, it, uh, you need, as was mentioned here, that you need legislative uh, thing as well as administrative. And along with that, it has to be on a pilot scale first. See, the machine that has now been conceived, the technology that, that, that machine can register vote for at least 72 constituencies. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a very unique thing. I mean, this is a very unique idea. And it will not only migrant laborers, it will also helping in, uh, you know, people, elderly people, you know, okay. aged people, sick people, you know, they don't have to go to the booths. The, you know, during the Gujarat election, we saw the Prime Minister's mother who recently passed away at the age of 99, you know, being uh, carried to the polling booth by way of sending a message that everybody should come to vote. Mm -hmm. We have seen several elderly people being taken by their families. Perhaps this machine could be made available to, you know, in those areas where the elderly people, it can actually, they can vote from home. I mm -hmm. mean, this possibility can also be there. I mean, there are several possibilities. And, 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 to, and, to the tough, and to the tough terrains as well, where the election commission officials have to make a lot of effort. No, even then, the, the, somebody has to carry these uh, machines to those places. That will be there. Mm -hmm. But the, what will happen is, everybody who is there, particularly if you are talking of uh, Northeast or some of our hilly states, where... People, you know, construction workers are there, engineers are working in various projects. See, the whole problem is, you know, when I have a voting card in my native place, when I move to a place of work, I don't want to cancel that or get engaged with the process and transfer it here. Because my voting card sometimes, along with Aadhaar card and other things, also establishes my local identity. My fear is when my property is there, if I cancel my election card there, but, you know, these are part of my documentation of my... Uh, you know, proof of my uh, being belonging to that place. Mm -hmm. So people don't want to cancel their old voter card. So there are a lot of duplication. This is also a problem which election commission has been talking about. You know, people don't. Indeed. Uh, uh, but when when we are talking of one nation, you know, one uh, card and one nation where people can move anywhere and do everything. Like, see, you may have a bank account in one place, but your ATM works everywhere. 
you can deposit your check in any branch the, all, all over the country so when these things are happening this is also a new idea Indeed. perhaps i think more persuasion will be needed more as as was mentioned more dialogue is needed but a new technology should not be rejected in a straight away the fear that this may benefit a particular party indeed indeed this is a, this is a noble uh, you know cause and uh, of course uh, the technology is in place uh, dialogue needs to happen uh, solutions need to be found to the questions which are raised and uh, some of them which we are discussing here mr raut uh, you know uh, the election commission has also sought views of the political parties on legislative and administrative changes if at all any required in technology as well as the demonstration has been made so uh, apart from technology when we talk about legislative or administrative changes what kind of changes might be required because uh, this will bring in uh, uh, bring in a lot of uh, new things uh, new ways to look at how uh, the entire uh, you know a part of the uh, voting process takes place uh, specifically those who are migrants domestic migrants Michelle, it's going to be a long haul it's not going to be easy you see the whole evm business got settled after many decades the vvpat also took its time to get settled so we must be prepared for a long haul and the whole election management between the managers and the stakeholders is based on trust everyone must come to accept and everyone must get convinced that this is a healthy equipment which is honest and which will deliver the goods so now you will have to have remote polling stations you will have to have the special equipment you will have to have an atmosphere in which the model code can be also be enforced and you can you will also have the transferability of the votes which have been obtained to the respective ro so and a lot of other things besides the of course the amendment of the laws and acts like rpr and the conduct of elections act and the rules those are very much necessary but those will happen only once the political parties come to an agreement that it's something it is important to start and here a note of caution or a note of advice to ourselves is that this is one thing which has to be seen from the lens of the helpless and hapless voter who has to as mr ayer was mentioning has to move out under compulsion as mr verma was also saying the urban migration is a reality uh -huh. so we have to look for their benefit not through a political lens that's one and then secondly we as uh, it progresses once the consultation begins there will be a lot of things which will automatically emerge which needs to be sorted out and i look at the whole thing within the overall envelope of reforms if you have seen there is a lot of reforms which are taking place of late and lot of them relating to voters participation and voters integration and the election commission and the whole country has become aspirational just before some time you said 67% 66% those are more recent earlier it was 50 55 indeed it is that is why the country is getting more aspirational to have sort of 75% turnout in the 75 year of independence just imagine the revolutionary amendment which was done last year to have four registration dates for introduction into the electoral roll that itself is enabling people to register the young persons to register and when the time comes to vote so and then we have even the 17 plus people to be lined up to be included when that time comes just now it was mentioned that the 80 plus people or people with disability their votes are being collected from homes so there is a quite a bit of reforms in terms of participation let's not forget that the national voters day mm -hmm. the 25th of january is just a week away and that is a reinforcement of the central character in the whole indian polity who is the citizen turned voter and this particular remote voting thing is being taken forward only to facilitate his life and just to correct one figure these 300 million people who don't vote they are mm -hmm. all not mi domestic migrants indeed no. that that is what i was pointing out here yeah. ha ah, yes yes they are not only part of that and as you very rightly said vishal some time back and also mr ayer endorsed it we have a big issue of urban apathy the migrant solution is not the overall solution of participation we have urban apathy and youth apathy look at mumbai look at delhi look at bangalore look at gujarat elections recently in which most of the cities and towns disappointed in terms of turnout so we have a lot of interventions which are going beyond the migrant issue mm -hmm. which have to happen so that we have a fulfilled 
and universally participated election which India so richly deserves. Okay, okay. Indeed, uh, there are uh, various uh, aspects here which need to be taken care of. Uh, Dr. Verma, in, in your views, you know, that uh, dialogue process which we are talking about and, you know, taking it forward uh, in terms of the changes which have to be made. Uh, obviously, the changes will have to be made based on what is required and the target here is uh, uh, domestic migrant, uh, you know, voters, uh, those who are domestic migrants. So what needs to be done and how can it be achieved uh, with, with the process, entire process which we are talking about? <clears throat> Vishal, as Mr. Raut was very correctly mentioning, that uh, there are two, three things which are very, very important in this entire issue. And one is that we have to look at this problem holistically. That means we have to look not only the inclusive aspect of the, you know, these migrant voters, but we have to look at the entire process of electoral reforms. And one very important thing uh, that excludes many genuine voters is that the election commission is not able to give primacy to the epic over the electoral rolls. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you have an epic which is issued by the election commission, and if your name is struck out from the list that is prepared by the local clerk and all other people, then you are stranded and you can't vote. And this is a very important contradiction, you know, uh, that has to be resolved, whether we have to give primacy to the EPIC or we have to give primacy to the voters list, which is prepared by a computer flaw or which is uh, names are deleted and people say, oh, there was a computer problem and this and that. So this has to be settled. That will take care of uh, so many inclusions. That okay. Is point number one. Number two is, that why should we have the Torah of voters list? I am a citizen of India and I need to have just one voters list, whether it be the election of parliament, I have one epic and that should be, you know, sufficient for voting in parliament, assembly, uh, local election, wherever, because I vote as a citizen of India. Why should I have multiple electoral votes? And that, 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 that is a very great problem, you know, uh, when you have the voters uh, vo voting for MLCs in the state elections, then uh, you do not know where to go, what to do, and when the vot voters are prepared, and there are so many other methods being applied for uh, enrolling voters. Why can't we have just one single voters list, which has also suggested by the committee, which was formed by the uh, by the election commission. Okay. And one very important thing that I have to share on this platform is that election commission is always worried about, you know, the the uh, rise in the voters turnout, a rise in the number of, uh, you know, people who can vote. That is fine. The quantitative aspect is very good. We are always boasting of India being a biggest democracy. But that's not very big deal. The big deal is about what kind of representative that we are electing. Will the election commission simultaneously also do something to improve the quality of the voters, mm -hmm. the quality of the representatives? They have a lot of meetings with the political parties, and but they are not able to control the quality of representatives. So the menu that you are serving to the voters, that is also a very, very detrimental factor for the uh, people to come out and vote. Many people say, I don't want to vote this in spite of the nota. Mm -hmm. But the nota that you have made is absolutely a bogus exercise. People know that nota is not going to make any difference uh, to your, you know, uh, elected candidate. So the nota has to be made relevant. The epic has to be given primacy over the voters list. Okay. The quality of the representatives, they have to be, you know, uh, bettered and uh, something has to be done not only for the rise in the number of vote, voters, but also the quality of uh, elector, elections, uh, quality of uh, elected representative that has to be, uh, you know, uh, raised. The criminalization part, the role of money. Uh, can you think that an ordinary person today will get elected in the Indian elections to parliament and assemblies? Okay. So these these are so many things that has to be holistically attended and focusing only on the EVM and the RVM uh, uh, would probably always be uh, you know uh, you know apprehensive. Uh, uh, political parties will also always be apprehensive. Uh, okay. And one final one final thing that I want to mention on this uh, uh, bindu is. That, you know, once you introduce the remote voting, mm -hmm. then state B comes into the picture of the elections in state A. Suppose I am a UP worker and I migrate to the West Bengal or I am migrated to Maharashtra and there you are putting up. So all the elections are managed by the local administration. Do you think that these states will come to be a player in the uh, third party elections, Indeed, the state elections? There this are intricacies. There, there are very important. there are intricacies involved, and those are the issues of you know uh, discussion and debate and uh, 
trying to find a common ground or find the way ahead as well. But the points you mentioned, Dr. Verma, are also part of the larger, you know, uh, election reforms, uh, which we've been talking about for quite some time. Uh, Mr. Iyer, uh, we're running short of time, but quick uh, final comments from you in terms of uh, the path ahead for this much, you know, talked about and discussed process of remote voting. And uh, of course, uh, majorly it will cater to domestic migrants, but it will cater to other segments of, of the voters as well, who are, who are unable to cast their votes. Yeah, definitely, Vishal. This is an this is idea whose time has come. But there are other aspects, as Dr. Verma was saying, there are other issues and also administrative issues. You know, what happens, uh, uh, how, how do you get registered? Because the process that was explained uh, to the opposition parties was, you know, that the voter has to, you know, first apply to that, uh, where he is registered as a voter to say that he wants to do remote voting. Then on the, that has to be done much before the elections are held. Then after that, the arrangements are made and that the remote thing happens. So there is, there is a lot of logistics involved. Okay. There is a lot of voter education because this also requires a fresh voter education. It's a big challenge. But mm -hmm. One must compliment the election commission for attempting it to, to making the beginning. Just as they had made a beginning with EVMs mm -hmm. and then with VVPAT. You know, VVPAT was also a greater improvement on EVMs. So similarly, I feel this is definitely a very big thing that's happening. And in times to come, okay. all these and more issues will come and they hopefully will get resolved. Okay, okay, indeed. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ayer, uh, Professor Verma, and uh, Mr. Rauth as well for sharing your views and insight uh, with us and our viewers here. As our experts were pointing out, uh, the concept of remote voting is an idea whose time has come, but there are various intricacies involved, various aspects which uh, will need to be discussed further and, uh, and consensus arrived on those issues uh, in terms of legislative mechanism, administrative mechanism and defining who the domestic workers are as well uh, and their number also. We'll keep a close watch on all the developments on this aspect and keep on bringing you the latest updates. Uh, come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.